just doing a test here. Can anybody hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, there. Louder. Okay, can everyone see the screen? Just let me know if everyone can see the screen here, too. Volume okay. Let's take a look at that really quickly. It, is it getting better or not? Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We're going to get started here in about two minutes. Okay. Actually, about one minute. <laughs> All right. So everyone sees this line here. It says advanced technical analysis. Thank you so much for coming. All right, wonderful. Oh no, we just had another sound issue? I've turned it up as loud as I can. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna talk loud. <laughs> How about that? I'm gonna shout. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be good. Then you'd really hear me. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for coming. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. And today I'm here to do a webinar on advanced technical analysis. So thanks for coming. And I really appreciate everyone's time today. It's one of these things where I know everyone is busy and you've got a lot of things to do. And of course, for those of you that trade, your day is done. The market closed a half an hour ago. But it's really good to come to these lectures sometimes to learn something, and you are going to learn something today. I actually have some good nuggets of information in the lecture today to not only teach you something, but also inspire you to trade. If you have a question, I can see the questions live here, so I'll go through and answer them live as you ask them. I'm seeing them as I'm doing this. And yes, this is being recorded, Hector asked, okay? If you would like more information after the webinar, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can also go to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, or Skype, and you can follow me at any one of those places there, okay? So we're gonna start out talking about advanced technical analysis to do what? To trade, to trade the market. Can you make money in the market using this? The answer is yes. The thing is that a lot of people don't know what things to focus on. Advanced technical analysis is kind of a broad spectrum term which we're gonna actually define here today. But understanding how to read price in the correct direction is really the key ingredient to profiting in the market. Meaning if you go long something, you make money. If you short something that drops in price, then you will make money. So you gotta go long things that are going up and you have to short things that are dropping in the market if you're a trader. This doesn't matter if you're a day trader or a long-term trader, but you got to get the direction right. You, so you've got to set yourself apart from the world of novice traders and investors by becoming an expert in technical analysis. Experts have knowledge, do their homework, and read information in real time in the form of price patterns and charts. So becoming an expert in technical analysis is a vital ingredient to becoming successful as a professional trader or investor. What a current company's value or worth is always reflected in the price now. And this is one of the most important things that I think people overlook. And we're going to talk about this specifically because the strategy that I trade looks at what's happening right now, okay, in the market. And that's how you're going to make money. Price patterns and charts hold the key to making decisions ahead of time and in the moment to profit and profit substantially. Making money in the market involves making timely decisions based on price. Price supersedes everything else, even fundamentals, okay? So that's very important. Now, one of the best examples of technical analysis and how I apply this actually is happening right now in the ETFs of the market. 
in the QQQs and also the SPY charts. Now, I clipped this. I didn't see exactly where the QQQs closed today, but I know we held strong. Now, we held strong ever since the day of the gap up that happened right here. This Today, we're on Tuesday. This is Monday. This was Friday. Friday, the market gapped up. Okay? And we are holding strong. The QQQs are about to make a new high. Not an all-time high, but a new high for the calendar year of 2015. We're very close to doing that. This, this high over here is about 114.30-ish and change. Okay, And the other day, we even could have done it. But we're so close to doing it. Now, if you understand how to read this chart in the market, you could have predicted what the market would do. In other words, that it would actually proceed higher and get over this high and that it's going to do it. How do you do that using advanced technical analysis? So I have a method that I use to trade which uses technical analysis to predict that this would happen. And we're going to go over this in detail today. Some people thought the market was lower after this day here on the 24th. I call this the anomaly day. The reason I call this the anomaly day is because it was such an unusual thing that happened the market actually gapped down huge, dropped, fell, and bounced. Okay, If anyone was trading this day, you remember seeing this, it was on a Monday. And I call it an anomaly because it's an unusual activity that happened in the market, something that you could not have predicted. Okay, But still, the trend in the overall market and the QQQs held bullish, even with this day here. And this is something we're going to talk about today. So you've got to make time to trade in a higher level to understand these things. Otherwise, you might have thought the market was lower. And if you're in a position or, or are in a position in any stock really in the market on that day, you might have gotten hurt. Uh, and you might have thought that the market was falling off a planet or something on that day. But the fact is it wasn't. People go to school to learn. Trading is no different from that. If you want to make money doing this consistently, if it's something that you want to do actually for a living, you really do have to take the time to learn it. So what really is technical analysis? Well, the methods used to analyze securities and make investment decisions fall into two very broad categories. One is fundamental analysis. Some people look at that and make decisions. And the other one is technical analysis. And this is what I use to make trading decisions. Fundamental analysis involves analyzing the characteristics of a company in order to estimate its value. Technical analysis takes a completely different approach. It doesn't care one bit about the value of a company or commodity. Technicians, sometimes called chartists, that's really what I am, are only interested in the price movements in the market. Now, somebody said to me earlier today, actually, someone that had done my class, he said, I saw the market was holding today, and I saw the market has been so strong. Why, Melissa? It doesn't make any sense. I said, what do you mean, why? What do you mean, why? You know why. I said, I taught you why. You read, read the gaps. And that's the strategy I trade that I'm going to talk to you about today, but it's based on advanced technical analysis. It doesn't matter why the market is rallying. You could, you could say, well, it's rallying because of this, that, and the other thing, or it should be falling because this, that, and the other thing. China, we're in debt, whatever. The reality is we're rallying, and the price is telling us that we're higher. Therefore, if you want to make money and you're in the market, you need to go long. Okay, So you can rationalize and look at things and say it makes sense that this would be the case, but the fact is that the price of what is happening right now is telling you exactly what you need to do with your money. And if you want to make money, then you need to look at that and follow it. So you really have to train your brain to read price action correctly instead of being kind of caught up in all these maybe this and maybe that and trying to analyze and over-intellectualize the whys of things. I'm, like I said, I'm a chartist. I just look at the price. I analyze the price and I make the decision and that's it. I don't go in my head and say, well, this doesn't make any sense because of so-and-so or whatever. I don't look at fundamentals at all. I don't even look at that with a company. I might trade a stock and short it on earnings, and maybe the earnings were great. I don't even read the earnings. I don't even care. It doesn't even matter to me. In fact, Apple is having earnings right, uh, is reporting right now. I don't know what it's doing. Someone can tell me very quickly right now what Apple's doing. I, I, I can't bring it up right this second. But it has earnings out tonight at 4 o'clock. Someone can tell me if it's rallying or if it's falling. But either way, you don't need to actually look and read the earnings or listen to the calls. You just see the price of what it's doing and make the decision based on the chart. It's up. It's up a little. Oh, that's interesting. It's not up a lot. All right, if we have time, we'll look at that when we're done. So reading price is like learning a language. You have to learn it. You have to learn it and understand it. You say, oh, there it is, and now you get it. 
So I have created a new method of how to read directional bias using technical analysis. And it is a pattern. It's a pattern that exists in the market. And this is how I make money trading. Understanding how to reprice is so critical to creating substantial gains in the market. What do you need to look for in a chart that tells you what something's going to do to be able to read the price correctly? Again, this is technical analysis skills. What is the advanced method that I use? What is important and what is not important? What is important is the gaps. And that is the way that I've been able to predict the action of the market. Now, this was a gap that happened just a few days ago on Friday. This is a one minute chart, but I'm showing you the gap on the one minute chart so you can see something here. I traded and shorted the P. We're going to go over this trade, but P closed the night before up here at around 19 some dollars. In the morning, then it gapped down around 13 something, okay? So using the chart and using advanced technical analysis, I analyzed the gap in P and determined that it was a short. And I shorted this, and as you see, the stock dropped. So I was able to predict using the chart that the stock would drop on the day. I'm using the price right now to be able to predict what's going to go in the future. That's how you make money, and then you take the trade before it does the move. Now, what is a gap? For those of you that don't know, for, that are new, a stock gaps when the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Now, we'll just go back to look at this again. What is a gap? That just means that this stock in P closed here at one price and opened the next day at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time at a different price. That's all that a gap is. Gaps can be small, gaps can be big, they can happen in stocks, and they can happen in ETFs. Now, let me look here. We have a question. Does technical analysis apply to all time frames? Yes, of course. That is an excellent question. You know why? There is no difference. It doesn't even matter. It's only P. P is trading at whatever price P is trading at. It has nothing to do with the one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute tick chart daily. It doesn't matter. Monthly chart in the P. It's just P. Traders are so in their head about things like that. It's like when people look at moving averages and they say, oh, the moving average is going to and it's scooping up. Well, okay, fine. But what does that tell you? You know, at the end of the day, you can have all these indicators on your charts that they're not going to help you make money. You can look at them and say, all right, fine, whatever. But it's really the price that helps you make money to be able to predict where it's going to go before it goes there. Otherwise, it's too late. Because if you saw this fall and tried to get into this at 10 o'clock after the market's been trading for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, guess what? It's too late. This actually had the whole move in here, and I'll show you what happened. Now, going back here to the market, okay, you could look at the market and you say, well, what, do we, what chart do we look at? Well, this is a daily chart of the market. I'm going back all the way to 1999, but I just want to show you here. I clipped this from last week, actually. This is even higher from here. But I just want to show you here how the market has had what I call a beautiful bullish rally that is not done. Many, many people, though, saw the rally in the market up into 2011, 2012, 13, 14, and 15, and thought the market was extended and was therefore going to come in. Now, again, no one could have predicted this move that happened here. It happened, but it didn't break the trend in the market, which was bullish. And now we're going to get over the high. We're probably going to get over the high, actually, the all-time high in the queues before the end of the calendar year. And that is my prediction. How am I predicting that? I'm predicting that based on the gaps in the market, based on reading the technicals in the chart in reference to gaps. Now, yes, someone asked me about futures. The answer is yes, you can apply it to futures. There's, there's value in looking at multiple time frames if you're a day trader. If you're a day trader and you want to be nimble in something and you want to get in and you want to get out, the answer is yes, okay? But other than that, it's all the same thing. You're looking at the same thing no matter what chart you look at, so it really doesn't matter. It's trading at the same price on every single time on every single chart. But as far as being nimble, if you want to get in and out at a certain time because you trade and have to go somewhere or do something, you're a day trader, that's a different story. And actually, I like to trade and be out very quick. Although today I'm going to talk about some of the trades I've done in the last two weeks that actually went to huge targets if you played them all day. All right, let's go back here to this. To This This is a one-minute chart of the day of the anomaly of the QQQs. Now, I'm using this example to show you something. The QQQs gapped down that day on August 24th. This is a one-minute chart. This is right into the open here, okay, into 930. And it fell 
It literally, it's like fell off a planet, $10 into itself, and then reversed itself, okay? So now if we're using advanced technical analysis skills, we say, wait a minute, the QQQs gap down. I have a method I use I, to predict what it's gonna do. I rate the gap, I have a rating system. It's like a checklist. And I rated the gap because I was wondering if the market was a short. It didn't meet the criteria for a short. Now I didn't go long this, but it was not a short. And then I figured this out before 9.30, then the market opened, then it dropped really, really big, and then it flipped. So the prediction I made was accurate, which was that the market was not a short. The low of the market has held since that day of the 24th. I do believe that's going to end up holding for quite a while, although I don't predict tops and bottoms. I feel that that is a substantial move that the market made that day. And why do I say that? Because buying came in. So how do I use technical analysis as a chartist? I'm reading the candles. This is buying. There's nothing that would make something like this fall off a planet into the gap and drop down $10 and flip above itself. There's only one thing that would move it reversed. It would have to be money coming in that would scoop it up and would buy it. And that's what happens. So I'm showing this in the one minute chart and let's go back, okay? Just let me just show you the bigger one here. I'm just going back a second. Do you see that this happened here? This is around where, wherever we opened, like around 94, 95, something, whatever. We dropped down $10. That was buying. Buying came in. It scooped it up. And look where we are from this area here at around 85 to where we are today. That would not be happening without buying. And how, do I, how could I predict this? Because I looked at this gap, and then I saw it wasn't a short. And then I've looked at every gap since. Okay. So... It's very important to use the information what's happening in the price right now to predict what it's going to do next. And how do you do that? Reading the charts and using the gaps. And then the method that I, I figured out to predict what it's going to do next. But this is very telling here. This is very important here. It's, it's, it's really telling actually. So the way that I figure it out is I have a 26 point rating system. I just go through the checklist in the morning. And my criteria is it has to meet 20 or more. So if the gap doesn't rate 20 or more, then I don't trade it in the direction of the gap. It's, I'm not looking for a perfect score. I'm looking for 20 or more. And on the day of the QQQs, it didn't get that rating. So I didn't short it, okay? And in fact, like I said, it got bought. So what is a golden gap? It's, it's a gap, and I described you what a gap is that has a high odds of working on the day. And in order to make money in the market, you have to have something that has a high odds of working. 50-50 really doesn't cut it after commissions and platform fees and room fees, you're down. You actually have to make profit more than you lose, okay? The one thing about my method is it spots institutional money, meaning that an institution is either buying the stock or the market or selling out of it or shorting it. But golden gaps are made by professional traders or institutions. I mean hedge funds and professional traders and institutions like banks. They are gaps that have the high odds of working on the day in the direction of the gap with a large momentum move. Now, let's look at some questions. Apple's up 3%, okay. So, let's look here at this PWR. Now, I rated this gap, okay? PDLBR happened on 10-16. Now, I just want to look at this with you and show you that the day before the gap, the stock was up here and closed at 4 o'clock Eastern time around 26 something. Then, boom, in the morning before the open, I rate the gap. I have no idea it's going to do this. I just see the price here hovering or wherever it was trading. And so I use my rating system, the 26-point rating system, to rate it. And I total up the points. And it tells me, A, is it a short or B, is it a long? And then I know what to do with it. It told me it was a short, okay? So then I looked to short it. It, it, it. it just fell off a planet. It actually went to what I would call the dream target. Now, here was the trade in PWR. Actually, you could have been very aggressive in this. Now, we're on the one minute, okay? Someone's asking about the time frames. Now it's on the one minute. So what I do is I rate the gap on the daily chart, pre-market or post-market. You can do it at night. Like, you could rate Apple right now. 
And then I look to take the trade in PWR on the one minute chart. Why? Because I'm a day trader and I want to get in and out in the morning quickly and be done. That's what I like to do. So the price of the entry in PWR, and I'll go back and show you on the chart in a minute, was 22.80. I shorted it. I put in hard stops. The stop was 23.10. It was 30 cents. On 4,000 shares, it's a $1,200 risk. This is an advanced risk, okay? You can divide this by half or a quarter. Exit in this was 21.50. This is a beautiful trade. You could have made over $5,000 in four minutes. So let's go back to it. 22.80 was the very, very, very first time you could have shorted the P, I mean the PWR. If you shorted this right in here, boom, you could have done this and got out immediately. So here's the short, boom, you're out. You could have been done for the day. Now, as it turns out, it's set up again. So, but this is a huge amount of money. So let's just say you only risked $600. You still would have made over 2,000, okay? So if you only took 2,000 shares of that and risked $600, you still would have made over two grand in less than five minutes. How is this possible? By accurately predicting what PWR is gonna do, by looking at the chart and knowing the levels of resistance and support in the targets and knowing how to take the entries based on the gap in the, in the stock to be able to take it aggressively like this. It's called conviction. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but the reality is that my system, I've been doing it now for seven years, I have 100% conviction in it. So I just know when to take the trade and just go after it. And I also have conviction in something like the market to make that call because of my analysis of gaps to be able to predict where it's gonna go, even in the long term, although I prefer to day trade. And the reason I like to day trade is because you can get in and out of something like this to make a lot of money really fast. And you could go to the gym here. This, your day could be done. There'd be no reason to take another trade. But I will tell you that a lot of these actually had jimongous moves in the last month. There have been sell-offs in stocks that have happened in the last two weeks that have been amazing using my system because it's earnings season and there's a lot of stocks that are getting play in them. And it's going to be down to the end of the year, actually. And despite the bullishness of the market, a lot of these have just what I call fall off, fallen off a planet. Now, PWR had a second trade in here, okay? If you wanted to do this again or didn't do the first one, 21.92 was a second short. Stop on this was 22.15, risk was 23 cents. Again, your risk should be similar to equal in every trade you take. So $920 is the risk on this, 4,000 shares again. If you stayed in this to the entire dream target, you would have made $11,680 on the day. Actually, this isn't the right time, I don't think here. No, that wasn't right. It was about almost an hour. You would have had to be in it. Not quite. But here's the entry in it. You would have had to stay in it to the whole move. How would you have known to get out? Right in here. And the time of the day. And the market. Okay. But if you took this trade, you could have gotten it down, let it rally back, lower the stop, and fallen it through. So if you did the first trade, you could have been done. You could have done the second trade and held it all the way down. You could have done the second trade and held it all the way down only. You could have done this trade and got out here. Either way, there was there was there was no way that with my analysis and calls in this that you didn't make money. Okay. Whether it was medium, big, small, huge, massive, it doesn't even matter. You had to get the direction right and you had to get the actual entry right and know where to get out of it. Okay. And this is all based on technical analysis. I'm just looking at the chart and I'm seeing right now what it's doing in the gap in the morning. And I'm seeing right now what it's doing on the live day to press the button to take the trade. And I do it. And it's just as simple as that. So the amount you could have made in PWR, if you took the first trade and risked over $1,000 and took the second trade and risked $1,000 and took them both, got in, got out, got in the second one and held it all the way down, you could have made $16,880 in that trade. That is a huge trade, but look at the bar in the day. Look at the bar in the day. And, but the reality is that was only worth a, a original risk of $1,200. Because if you did the first trade and made $5,200, you risk $1,200, you're up $5,200. You still would have had profit of four grand on the day. Even if the second trade wouldn't have failed, you still would have had profit on the day of over four grand. So you couldn't have lost, except for the first trade, which worked in five minutes. And if you took the second one and held it all the way down, you, you, you made over $16,000. And this is just in one stock. That's enough money for people to pay their bills for not only a week, but a month. Okay? 
You lost sound. Can everybody hear me or not? Somebody said they lost sound. Please tell me if it's working or not. Is it okay? All right, somebody can probably help the other person. Sorry. All right, let's go back to the next thing. This is phenomenal. Now, let's go back to the QQQs as I was saying in here. What's important? What's not important? What's important is the gaps. What's not important? Lower highs and lower lows and higher highs and higher lows and all these moving averages doing different things that people focus on and all the different things that people are looking at as indicators in their charts that are making decisions and some people actually shorted the market. That's not really what is important. You can use those things in conjunction with what I teach in my methodology, but that is not the be all end all. Otherwise, we just all buy the same indicator and guess what? We'd all make money, but we really wouldn't because it wouldn't work that way. So it has to do with actually analyzing what's happening in the live price data in the gap before the market opens and then in the live data take the trade of the one minute chart. It's not important to be looking at lower highs and higher lows and all that stuff that people do when they buy and sell stocks. You have to know what it is that is going to tell you where it's going to go. And it's in this thing called a gap. And it's something that I figured out seven years ago when I started trading. And I didn't roll out of bed and figure it out in a day. It took me three years to figure this out. And a lot of people do not trade gaps accurately. In fact, many people trade gaps and do not know what they're doing in them. Very few people actually teach gaps at all that are out there in the educational world of trading. And the ones that do don't even teach it accurately. But there's so much momentum that can come into a gap. And it's because of the fact that it happens with institutions that make them and create them and move them that that's what makes the power in them to be so profitable as a trader, whether you day trade it or take it overnight. So gaps are really created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap. The gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. So if you're an intellectual person and you need to understand why, this is why. This is why what I do works, okay? It's not about the earnings or the fundamentals, but this is why it works. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it so it moves it. You just get in it before it moves it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and it just moves it with you. And then you play it. Gaps are an event. It's an event in the chart. It's a, it's a technical analysis event that happens in the chart and it creates a sense of urgency in the case of shorting and sometimes in the case of going long, which is very unusual actually. And that's what's gonna happen in the market too, by the way, when the market goes over the high. But anyways, getting back to this. Thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. And that's why you make a lot of money doing it. Whether you do it for five minutes or 45 minutes, it's powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and money. It's power money that makes gaps. It's millions and billions of dollars. It's not just a little bit of money. I'm looking for the volume and stuff. And using advanced technical analysis is a very professional way to trade. People that are making money in the market look at price. They read price. They're not looking at a moving average, okay? They are analyzing and reading what the price is doing right now, making very important decisions about these things based on where they're putting the money or where they're getting out, okay? And you can more accurately make money which obviously is your goal, if you focus on the very specifics of this. And, and technical analysis and gaps really gives me conviction to trade, which is how I'm able to risk $1,000 or more in some of my trades, because that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for one person, even me, to risk in a trade, because not every trade I take works. Sometimes I take a trade that doesn't work, and then I'm down that amount. So I have to know that consistently, over the course of the week and the month and the year, I'm going to get a certain percentage well above the amount that I'm risking that it's going to work. And this is where going through the process and having the conviction really helps you with what you do. Experience helps too, but you got to start from somewhere. Uh, let me answer some questions here. What is the size of account do you need to start with? If you start with a prop account, you can start with much less. A retail account, you need 25000 a day trade in the U.S., I don't know about outside of the US. For a prop account, you'll have to talk to places and call them yourself, but I believe you can open up an account with as little as 2,500. Obviously, you wouldn't be risking $1,000 though in that, in that trade. 16,000 pays three months of bills. That's nice for you. 
Um, some people look at lower highs and lower lows. Sure they do, but that's not a strategy. You can use that in your analysis of something, but that's not the reason you should ever take a trade. It does not work as a reason to take a trade because there's no strategy based on that. There's no strategy. It's, there's no weightiness. When I say strategy, I mean the brick. The brick's the, the foundation of the house. The foundation of the house that's building the house that you're going to live in, which is your career if you're doing this, okay? You need a level two platform and a live brokerage account with charts to day trade. You can, you can open up a platform and a, and a trading account anywhere that you can look online or if you want to email me for a referral. Uh, why stocks cap up and then pull back? Give me an example and I'll look at one. I mean, there's a million things that things do, but for example, I only do ones that rate per my system. Of all the gaps that happen on the planet on every single trading day, of which there's a lot, I don't do hardly any of them. That's why I'm pinpointing it and picking down to look at one or two. I'm only doing one or two, that's it. So there's thousands and I'm only doing one or two. So there's a million that do different things, but I'm only looking for one good one because that's all that you need, and maybe two. So my 26 point rating system can be used to rate stocks to play intraday. However, it can also be used to take them as swinger core trades. One of the reasons why the Golden Gap course is so unique, that's the class I teach, is because the system can be used in multiple ways to trade one stock symbol, and the market is a great example of that actually. And it can be used to trade in multiple time frames depending on your financial goals. I like to day trade though, okay? I'm just setting you out here, I'm a day trader, but my method can be used for longer term. So how is this possible? Because everything in the system follows the patterns created by large institutional money. This is why the information taught in my Golden Gap class is so valuable because many systems that you learn do not have a multi-purpose way to use them. You can use my system to day trade, swing trade, core trade, or do options. And someone even asked about futures. So it doesn't matter what the time frame is, although your target and your risk assessment will be different if you're a day trading versus carrying overnight, okay? The Golden Gap rating system uses advanced technical analysis in ascertaining the direction. Do you go long or short it? The setup, what time you take it, where do you take it, and where do you get out? And again, on multiple time frames. Now let's look at another one here that happened just in the last two weeks as well. This is October 15th. This is GRMN. Again, it's a short. And I, I actually like to short. For those of you that don't know me, I'm, I like to short. I prefer to short because shorting moves happen very, very quickly and they can happen big. So this stock closed the night before I appeared around 36 something, gap down here the next day, it says it gap down and I rated the gap. It gapped around 33 something. So I rated the gap and I said, yes, this is a good short. I'm gonna look to short this stock on the day. So the stock open, rallied, dropped, rallied up again and I shorted it, okay? This is a one minute chart. The entry price was 33.65 where I shorted it. Stop was 20 cents. 5,000 shares, again, I'm risking the same amount. And if you risk tra money in trades, you have to risk the same amount in every trade, whatever it is. You determine that based on your account size. Exit into the first drop was 33.10. And this is a profit I made and it happened very quickly. So with a short, I shorted it here, boom. Again, I like to be in and out very quickly in my trades. Now someone's asked me another question. How do I find the best stocks to day trade? You just scan them. You scan them and then you rate them. You'll be joining my class once you save more money. Wonderful. I trade stocks only, but I tell I say half the people in my trading room are doing options too because because they just do. They did options before they met me, and then they realize they can use it for options. But me personally, I'm only doing the day trades. I don't know about the audio, Trevor. Can you ask uh, Dan maybe? Not sure about that because I don't know much about the GoToMeeting thing here or the WebEx, I'm sorry. How does your analysis change, if any, with respect to a 24-hour market such as the E-mini stock index or futures? It's, you got to have a gap. You have to have a close and an open. For example, the Forex, you only have one gap a, a week, so that's all you can do it. You've got to have the stock scapping. That means you have to have a close and you have to have an open, Okay. So, so it has to be a, a, a method or a market that has a close and open daily. Otherwise, it's whenever it has it. 
how do you scan for the gap trade and how do you get the point system added up quickly enough to take action? Because you could do it right now. You've got, you've got, you've got so much time now to rate Apple. You could do a million things. It's 5.03. The market doesn't open on 9.30 tomorrow morning. You've got more than 12 hours to figure out if Apple's a good gap or not. Go. And, and I do it in the morning in five minutes, but I'm just saying you got plenty of time. You got gaps at night. You got gaps in the morning. This, the market in the pre-market even opens at six something. You've got so much time, it's not even funny. And actually, I, I only start like around 7.30, 8 o'clock. I give myself a good hour. I'm running the trading room live, but it only takes me three to five minutes to rate one stock. I'm not rating 100,000 things, though. I mean, you do know that. I scan and I'm like, no, 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 no. And then I might make a watch list of like five things and then I rate them. So maybe it takes me half an hour to rate five or six things, but I still am prepared and I'm ready to go well before 9.30 to know what I want to do. And I might look tonight and see what I want to do, but you have plenty of time. And the preparation is exactly what you want to do because we just got done talking about professionals. Do you think professionals get up in the morning? First of all, professional traders are at they are at their desk like at 7 a.m. I mean, they're at their desk sometimes earlier than that. Like they're at their desk at 7 a.m. and they are there and they're ready to go and they're situated and they are looking at stuff. I mean, they're not like rolling out of bed and 9.25 or rolling into the office. That's just not what people do. People that are trading to make money, to make real money, to make thousands of dollars in trades, whether they're in them for one hour or five minutes or, or till four o'clock, are, are not just taking pot shots. They're like me. They're like, okay, we have a system. We're using it. I'm figuring this out. I'm doing it ahead of time. I got to know how much I'm risking. Where am I getting out? Am I taking this past 10? Am I going to get out the first trade? Am I going to hold it to the dream target? Like I figure out all of that before 930 rolls around. I mean, you have to. This is, I mean, you have to. Okay. Um, let me just see here. There's a couple other questions. You have plenty of time though. And it should take you three to five minutes to rate one gap. Uh, you have to ask the broker specifically. People are asking me about cash accounts and options. That kind of stuff you have to ask the broker. Again, you can refer me. I can refer you to a broker, but I'm not a broker. So you'll have to ask those specifics. Account size definitely matters in reference to your risk. Okay, You cannot take a $1,000 risk in a trade with a $2,500 account. You've got to be reasonable. And you also have to be reasonable with your own uh, ability, meaning did you just learn this yesterday or have you been doing this for three months or one month? Yeah, I can show you a gap in a swing trade. I, all I do is just scan for the gaps. You can buy a scanner or you should have a scanner in your platform. I have a free scanner on my platform I use. I do have criteria to find the gaps. It's a 26 point criteria. I tally them up and go through the checklist. If it rates 20 or more, then I do it in the direction of the gap. It has nothing to do with the hugeness or the non-hugeness. <laughs> Someone's asking about the hugely gaps. They could be non-huge or huge. Mini, huge, megalodon, not huge at all. <laughs> Trading room is open 8.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern time. It has nothing to do with the hugeness. It has to do with the rating. And that's a very important point that I actually answered to someone that asked me that the other day in the trading room. This is not about one thing. Oh my gosh. I love you people. I love day traders. I love traders in general. I love all of you people. I've got to tell you right now, you're hilarious. You people are amazing. Listen, I'm going to teach you something that's worth the price of coming here today, which was free, by the way. You, you cannot just look at one thing. If you got to get out of that mentality, just amnesia, okay? Where you have gone in the back of your head that you think that you're going to have one thing and be able to do it all and make a million dollars is so incorrect. I, I got I to gotta pat myself on the back for a long, 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 long time ago, realizing that that was not the case. And don't think that I didn't think what you thought either, because I did too. When I started out back at the end of 2008, everybody sold me a song and dance that I'd buy this indicator and that thing and it'd be easy to make money. Well, I lost and I lost a lot. The reality is it is not about one thing or two things or three things. If I ever come out with a method that's 55,000 points, I'll do it. If it means I never lose and can risk billions of dollars. Don't you understand? It's, it, this is what a system is. It's like a puzzle. You take all the pieces of the puzzle together and you gather them up and you say, yes, 
I see it. I can predict it ahead of time because of this thing and 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 this thing. And all of that gives me conviction to risk $1,000 in a trade. It is not about one thing. And I love all you people because I know I've been there. You cannot be so narrow-minded and focused thinking that you're going to find one thing that gives you all the answers. You, you, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to have to get good. You're just going to have to learn it. You're going to have to get good at reading charts and learning and knowing what I know. And you can do it. You can do it. Guess what? Because you're intelligent human beings and you want to do it. And if you're passionate about making the money in the market, then you will learn it and you will do it. Just like all the people that I've taught. Actually, there was somebody on Friday, shower singer. He's in my room. He, he, he made more money in that trade on Friday than I did. And he, he's been with me for two years. You know, you, there's, just, there's no stopping you once you learn how to do it. But you have to be comfortable in what you're doing in the trades. But this idea of being narrow-minded and, and trying to find this one thing, it, it just, just forget it. Just forget it. Okay? Uh, if you, I think everybody, I'm going to get everybody's emails to send them the recording. Let me just say, that is what I teach in the class. The process of going through the rating I teach in the class. Price minimums and maximums, like I'm not trading like Google at $700, if that's what you mean. Could I? Yes. Am I really excited about doing that? No. But there's no minimums or maximums as far as implementing the system or using it. I would say I have a success rate that is around 80%. Someone just asked me that. I don't know if you can see all the questions or not. I have a very high success rate. Do I ever, does every trade that I take work? No. I use hard stops. In other words, if the trade stops me out, I'm out. I'm out and I lose the money in the trade. Okay? And we're going to talk about risk to reward in a, in a minute here. But again, don't be unrealistic. There isn't anything out there where everything works all the time. That's why you have to size yourself right. That's why if I took two trades in a row and one I risk 1,000 and the other one I risk 1,000, and one loses a thousand and the other one makes me five, I'm up four. But if I take two trades, the one I risk a thousand and the one I risk 200 and the one that I risk a thousand loses and the one that I risk 200 wins and I make five R's, then I, then I actually am flat. And I had one good trade and one bad trade and I shouldn't be up, not up any money. Do you see? It's like, this is, this is again, basic, basic risk to reward. But I do teach that in the class. Let me just see if there's any other things that I missed here. 8.30 to 11, the trading room is open. I teach in the class the process of the rating. It is about price, but it's about price and gaps. You can use a strategy for anything that has a gap in it. Yes, I'll show how to enter the trades. Great energy, Melissa, thank you. Do I trade gaps that occur in the stocks that are on the borderline of institutional attention price-wise? I don't know what you mean by the borderline. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta give me more than that, John. What do you mean borderline? Yes, I do a different stock every day. Uh, I never said anything about indicators. I don't think there was anything at all in anything that I said in the analysis about indicators. In fact, I'm telling you not to use indicators. Terry is saying that this is about indicators. And yes, I am here because I actually teach a class. I, I, I teach a class. If you want to take the class, I'm going to save the information at the end. If you don't and you don't find any value in listening to me or anything that I'm saying, and I am doing teaching. I don't know if you just came in or if you didn't pay attention to what I said. I've been teaching for the last 45 minutes. I mean, I have a business where I trade live. Call the trades in the room. People follow me, and I teach a class on the weekends once a month. And I also personally trade live. That is what I do. I'm a day trader and I have a business. And that's a fact. My time is very valuable. Okay, I'm taking an hour out of my day here to talk to you about what I do to see if you're interested. If you're not interested, then you can sign out. If you're interested, you can stay. Uh, let me just say. I teach the rating system and I teach the entries and the exits. Okay. All right. Let's get back to this because we got a little sidetracked there, but it was good. It was good. We're going to go over GRMN to the dream target. I did not hold this to the dream target, but the point I'm trying to make is that if you really want to trade a bigger target, some of these gaps can really sell off. This entry here, the initial entry that I did that I got out of quickly actually ended up falling to an amazing number. You could have held this all the way down in the afternoon, but then you're taking the trade in the morning or holding it in the afternoon. So if you held this, I did not hold this trade. But if you did, and you shorted it where I shorted it at 33.65, you had to be in it to quarter or two. 
You had to be in it till the afternoon. Same trade, same risk, except for you got a bigger move out of it. You would have been in the trade for four hours, okay? If you did both trades in this, the first trade and got out, and if you did the second trade and held it, total risk was 2,000 in total. It was a 6.8 R trade. Again, you could have made 13,000. I did not hold this to the, to the whole thing. I like to trade in the morning and be done. That's just me personally. But I'm showing you here that if you wanted to do this and play it on through hard, you could have had another huge, huge J just like the PWR one. And this is, this is the money that I made in the GRMN. So I did and I got out. I was very happy with my day. To be able to make this kind of money in five minutes is what I do very, very well. But I'm showing you that this you could have held this a lot longer. So the trade I did where I made that money was I took it and got out of the first drop because I was up. And it was a nice trade. It was, it was basically three R's. But I'll tell you, if you took this same trade that I did and didn't get out here, look where it went. So this is the power of the gap, okay? And, and ultimately, you have to decide what you want to do with this system. Not every train goes to the full-on target. But the interesting thing is that in the last two weeks, a lot of these have had massive, massive moves. I do not fade trades. I might take a little dip off half of it or something if it pushes back, if I feel like something like the market's against me or whatever. But for the most part, if my goal for the day is in, I take it all out unless I decide that I'm holding it to the dream target. And the only way I would do that is if it did something like it opened and swooshed. No, it's all me. It's all me. It's The speaker is me. The trader is me. The teacher is me. The, 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 the person that made the system, created it, is me. It's all me. <laughs> Someone asked, is there any other people? No, it's just me. The time frame on this chart that I trade on is a one-minute chart. If you want to email me about getting referrals for brokers, just email me at melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, -S -S at thestockswoosh.com. Uh, I guess I sometimes short stocks that are under $5. Sure, I do. Sometimes I do. I don't have a problem with that. I teach the rating system, I teach the entries, I teach the exits, I teach the targets, and I teach something called the swoosh. The, the whole day, the first day of the class is a 26 points. I mean, that's the entire one full day. It's, it's a lot of information. So percentage of return in day trading, we kind of were talking about this earlier and someone asked something. This is based on an R concept. I did talk about technical analysis. It's technical analysis and gaps, Lewis. I'm going to talk more about that. I talked about it in the market. I talked about it in the PWR. I talked about it in GRMM. Every time I'm showing a chart, the chart is based on candlesticks and price analysis and gaps, which is what technical analysis is. Okay? I'm going to talk more about charts in a minute. Uh... You can learn this as a new person. I've taught my method to people that have never traded the market before. Um, these trains, Patty is asking me about making money in 30 minutes. Yes, th the idea of making one risk unit risk times three, which I'm looking at my trades. So if you are trying to make, you have to go back it up your goals. If your goal is to make $20,000 a month, that's an average of what? It's an average of $5,000 a week. That's an average of $1,000 a day. If you risk $1,000 a trade, you're going to make more than that. So you need to be risking about $500 a trade to make an average of $1,000 a day, Patty. Okay? You need to be making $1,000 a day. So percentage of return is based on an R concept. As I was showing you, it's one risk unit. Now, Patty was saying, how do you make twenty grand a month? Risk around $500. Four or 500 is good. A thousand is what I'm risking, and sometimes more. You'll make more than that. The risk unit per trade should be equal or close to equal per trade. The risk unit is the amount of money you're actually risking in the trade if you use a hard stop. If you do not use a hard stop, you'll have unlimited risk. So I don't do that. I use a hard stop. If my trade stops me out, I lose. That's it. I don't give it any extra room. And again, I know based on the chart, based on the analysis of the price in the chart, where that stop needs to be. And I do teach that in the class. So many people do not know where to put a stop and they don't use them. However, I think it's very important to use stops. I will always use stops. And I, I'll take a position with 10,000 shares and put in a stop. Okay. 
The reality is that you have to know where that is. And again, this is based on advanced technical analysis. Now let's look here at the hog. This was one back from 1020, hog gap down. Now, if you're looking at the daily chart of hog, okay, you're looking at the price of the close the night before. It closed up here at 56 and it gapped down. It gapped down here at around 51 something. So using the 26 point rating system, you rate the gap. It tells you predicting what the price will do. That's what technical analysis is. It is price prediction. I'm using past price data and the current price data to predict the future move of this stock. For the purposes of what I do, all I want to do is predict the future move of it for today. And I want to know if, if in the future of today, from 930, from the open into the day, can I short it and make any money? Or should I not short it? Or should I go long it? And in the case of hog, it was a short. Someone was asking about an example of swing trades. This is actually lower here, this hog. Now let's go over the actual entry in the hog. This was a bigger stop. Again, I used stop. Stop was over here. Here's the short entry. There's the stop. And here's the first drop into the morning if you want to take it out. But again, this is another one that fell. Look, could you have predicted this with the numbers on the chart using technical analysis? The answer is yes. Yes. But here was the short. It was at 931. You shorted it at 5120. Um, or no, yeah. Yeah, you shorted it at 51.20. I put the stop a dollar over it, 52.20 or thereabouts. It was like 52.10. So this was a big stop. So I could only take 1,200 shares of this. The risk was 10.80. And I got right out quickly, quickly, quickly in five minutes. So you can do this, take it, boom. Again, be out very quickly. Or you can hold it for longer. The longer trade in hog, same entry, dropped. The bigger target actually was 48, but I will tell you this went down to 46 something. So this is not the low of the day, but there was a real target in this. Again, you base it off the chart, off of technical analysis was 48. If you held this and took the original trade and held it to the target of 48, it was $3,840 profit. That's a really nice trade. Uh, let me just look here at a couple of things. You're looking for a three to one. Some trades will be one. This was one but I got right out. It ended up going more, so you could have made more. So this is where you have to money manage yourself. I felt the stock was big on this though, to be honest with you. I'm not using options. I'm doing the stock right out. I'm actually shorting it with buying power, with leverage that I have in an account. I'm not doing the options. Some people do, some people don't, okay? I don't really trade like that. Someone's asking about trailing after I'm up with the money. I don't really trade like that. If either I decide I'm getting out of a portion, like half, and then I just let the stop be at the same place and let it ride on down to the rest, I really don't trail like that. I actually don't even really trade like that at all. This, this is a one minute chart. This is the daily chart. I'm using the rating system on the daily chart to determine that I even want to do hog as the pick. And then I determine, is hog a short or a long? And then I take the trade into the open at 9.30. I'm not doing anything in the trade until after the open. But I know I like hog, and I know hog's a short, and I've rated the gap before 9.30. You don't need any special software for my program. How many of the gaps? I just said that earlier. You might not have heard me, Eric. It's, it's um, I have a success rate of about 80%. Okay. Now let's go here with the rest of the things that I wanted to talk about. You're looking for a big move on the day. You're looking for confirmation of the bias between 9.30 and 10. And the ideal situation for any day trader is to have good risk to reward and a high probability. This is really the only money that you can, way that you can make money as a day trader. If you're taking trades and making one for one every trade after your cost of trading, you're, you're actually down. So it's very, very important to look for stuff that has good moves. And part of it is the entry that I would know I would take a 10 cents, 20 cents stop to be able to get in and out. Now, this was an amazing move from Friday. This was P. P had a gap. P closed up here the night before and gapped down. Then I rated the gap, okay, using technical analysis on the chart. The 26 points are the technical analysis, but I'm getting it from the chart. And I'm using the gap to determine if I want to do the P. Then I rate it. And I say, is P a long or is P a short? Okay, 
we talked about this earlier when the P set up. This is the one minute chart I had showed you earlier in the day. The short was right here in P and look where it went. This is really was an amazing move. I did the trade at 931, shorted it, boom. And I made 2860. Again, I had a beautiful day in this. And I thought that was amazing. And guess what it did? It went even more. <laughs> and this is what's hilarious. And I love this stuff though. But anyways, this ended up going to the target, the dream target right in the first move. Look at that. It actually went all the way down to 1150. If you took the trade and held it all the way down, you made $8,100. I mean, literally I had 6,000 shares of this. Now I did risk $1,500 on this. I love the gap. This is what is so fantastic about what I do. Now I wanna show you this here. Someone was asking earlier about technical analysis. This right there, that is that. So I had the number and that was it. Hold on, let me just look here. Um, I put the stop in every trade I take, yes. I rate the gap in the daily chart and sets up in the one minute, yes, which I teach in the class. How do your cap trades come into play in the swing trades? You just have bigger, you bigger have bigger stops. You'd have you have bigger areas for the stops. Okay, you still would take the trade the day of the gap or the day I call the swing trade. I have a swing trade letter, but you would have a bigger stop. So you you, you wouldn't take five thousand shares of P or, or or any of the things. You understand? There's many, many reasons. Someone's asking about earnings in reference to gaps. In earnings season, there's lots of gaps. Why? Because many stocks gap based on earnings, but that's not the only reason I play gaps. I'll look at gaps because of anything. Downgrades, upgrades, news. Kramer could get on TV and say something about a gap. Either way, I'm just looking for stocks that are gapping, but you tend to get more gaps in earnings season. Now, did anybody just notice what I just said? No one has said a word. No one's flabbergasted by this because I was when I saw it. Look at that. So I did this trade. I got out of this before it fell here. This was a number I had, but look at it. There it is. And this is why you have to get good at advanced technical analysis because everything that you need to know is actually there. The problem is that many people have absolutely no idea what to look for, except for I do. But like I said, it took me a while to figure this out, but this is why you would wanna come and learn from me. Now, getting back to the percentage of an R concept, this is how you make money. This is how you make money. For those of you that are not profitable, think about your risk. Are you not risking the same in every trade? It is very important. If you did every trade that I talked about in this room and held them to the dream target, which, which I didn't hold all these to the dream target. I did the initial trades because that's what I do. But I will tell you that I've I've been re-looking at this for myself after the last two weeks. I've actually been reevaluating this myself in the last two weeks. But, and the reality is that if you did every trade I called, some people in the room did, some people actually in the room did hold these longer. But if you did every trade I called and held them to the targets that I knew that I, that I had, I just didn't hold them to the bigger targets. You would have made $42,000 in 441 in two weeks, in two weeks in these trades, risking a thousand bucks. And I, I was there, I was in them, I did them. I just didn't hold them to the bigger targets, although I had a beautiful last two weeks. I'm not going to complain. But I had the calls. I had the trades. I did them with sides. I did everything right. I did not hold them to the bigger targets, but I had the numbers, and I, and I had them. And, it, and I'm really starting to think whether or not I should start to do that. I mean, this is, this is sick. This is sick here. $42,000 in two weeks. The trades I did, I was in them with that size. I was in them. This is like a sick amount of money. So I'm well on my way to making a million dollars a year trading. All I have to do is start to hold some of these things more and because I've got the numbers, I know where they're going. But I'm telling you that you got to get good at picking them and getting the entries. I'm there. It's just that I haven't been holding them. And I really don't have an explanation why I haven't been holding them other than the fact that I'm so used to being happy with the money I make, two, three, four thousand dollars that I, I, I feel like not wanting to be like a piggy in the market. And so I'm so I'm so happy to make three thousand dollars in five minutes is exhilarating. And I've been so used to doing that, but now I'm really seeing the potential in these things that I'm doing now, it's seven years, and I'm seeing that this is crazy. This is a sick amount of money to make in two weeks. And I was in these trades. I just didn't hold them down and I had the targets. And I'll tell you, like, it's just, I think you gotta get to a point, and I'm, I'm like at this point with my trading now, and, and teaching actually has helped me get better too. 
because I'm going over the information over and over and over again every time I do a class to help my own conviction, you, you start to realize that you can really, really make a lot of money in the market. I mean, you can really actually do it. I think it just is that people don't know what to do, but I'm, I do. And, and I think once you get to a point where you are making substantial money, which, which I'm doing very well, you start to realize that you could really, really go at it. And then you get to the point where you put these kind of numbers on the board and, and it's like, it's fantastic actually. Uh, so the market has been very bullish, but all of these things that rated well per my 26 point rating system went to the targets and I had the targets and I had the trades. I just didn't hold them to the bigger numbers. But even when I sat down and figured this out, I was flabbergasted. This is only in two weeks. This is even a month. Okay. So one important key factor in becoming successful traders, keeping in mind the bigger picture while living in the now. You can live in the now with your daily decisions. Like if you have another job or, or, or doing other things, you can still do that and learn how to trade. You've got to decide what you really want to do. Do you want to do this for a career, for a part-time job? What do you want to do? Many people just never get off the ground to actually learn something that's good and they're flipping around from thing to thing to thing and they never get good at one thing. I've got to give myself credit that I stuck with this gap thing, figured out a way to pick the right ones, and I also prefer to short. So I'm really honed in on the focus of the shorting and the gap itself. And that's how I've turned it into a full-time career for myself a long, long time ago. But it did take me three years to figure it out. You've got to risk the amount of money you're comfortable with and learn how to trade and just get good at it. You've just got to start somewhere. But for me, I've been looking at the time of the day investment, which it happened so quickly. And, and, and yet, still, to be able to be in something for one hour, two hours, even four hours at one trade, it's, that is just a phenomenal amount of money to make even in one day of your life to work. And there's no other place you can do that other than the market. Unless you want to go to school to be a physician or a surgeon or something like that, and then you're investing tons of money in 13 years of your life. This requires some effort to learn it. And as we discussed earlier, it's not about being narrow-minded, about looking for one thing or two things or three things. You have to learn it all. It's a system you put it together. That's how you layer on the conviction to determine the high probability that it will work. It's got to be 20 points or more. It's looking at everything. And of course, the benefit of doing this is that you can work from home. So my class teaches one strategy, multiple entries in place, how to trade the open, which is how I'm getting into these, these beautiful moves aggressively, before the sell-offs happen or the buying. I teach you how to book money in trade and stocks, where to book it in the targets, advanced chart reading skills, which is extremely important if you want to be a professional trader, and how to get conviction in your trading the market as a source of wealth. Now, let me just see a couple questions here. Are there usual t uh, setups? I teach six entries in the class. That's what I do. I'm mainly short, although I do go long occasionally, but I prefer to short because the short moves happen fast. But I've read the market long, reading bullish gaps in the market. So I do go long sometimes as well, but I prefer to short. Uh, if you can't go short in an IRA account, which I don't know if you can or not, you have to check with, again, your broker, then you would have to learn bullish gaps and you would go long, which I do teach a bullish gap class, but I prefer the shorts myself. My system is pretty awesome. Congrats on your success. Thanks for sharing the opportunity to open your mind to the possibility. Thank you. Uh, it's nothing to do with more down gaps and up gaps. You get the same amount of both. Does the direction of the general market make a difference to you? Only in the sense that I might see, for example, if I see the market's going to power trend up today, then I might not want to stay in a trade long. That's how I would use that. Otherwise, it has nothing to do with anything. The moving averages are the 8, the 20, and the 50. I'll bring up a chart and then show you. You are going to get a recording of the webinar. Uh, what are you asking about a doji? I don't know what the doji question was there. No, I teach a bullish class and a bearish class. The bullish class is later this year in December. The bearish class is in November. You can email me for the dates of the bullish class. Netflix was another great bullish call I called. I usually do one trade a day, maybe two. So I usually do anywhere from five to seven trades a week. The Golden Gap class teaches a strategy and how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26 point rating system, as I said, and what direction to trade it on the day. I'm looking at chart analysis and technical analysis on a very advanced level. Again, we someone was talking earlier about percentage of wins versus losses. If you are following me in the room, and if you take the class, you are eligible to join the line trading room. You have to take the class to join the room. But if you're doing five trades a day, 
you, 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 do you understand how you limit your losses? Many rooms are open all day to four o'clock and they're calling umpteen trades. You can't even follow all their trades. It is very easy to follow me. I'm doing one a day, maybe two. That's it. You cannot have lots of losses if you're not doing lots of trades. I'm very focused. So it's like a catch-22. Someone's talking about looking at indicators or something. Don't be narrowly focused in your analysis of the pick when there's thousands of stocks. You have to broaden your horizons, look at it, and you have to look at everything as a system to determine what to do and rate it. But then when you're on the live day and you're going in like a, like I'm going in like a sniper and I'm taking it, then I'm going in for that thing that I want and I'm grabbing the money like that. That's when the focus comes in where you're looking at it at the one thing and you're going like that and you're taking it, okay? And then if that one doesn't work, you're down that one trade, then you stop and then that's it, okay? A lot of people don't do well in the market because they over trade. I do not do that. It's just something that I just don't do. To learn a strategy that you can use to make money in the market is something I teach in the class. The stocks offer momentum that I'm trading, okay? I'm teaching you how to read chart and price patterns, what symbol to trade in the day, the exact entries for the stock and determining the targets. And this is really a nice career you can do from home. And, and that's the thing I love about actually day trading. So empower yourself to trade. I teach a class, as I've been saying, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. I teach a bullish class that's in December. The bearish class is in November. Retakes are free. The class is online. It is November 7th and 8th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. This teaches you all the 26 points in day one on the Saturday and on the Sunday. It's the entries. I teach six different entries, targets, the stock swoosh. And the cost of the class is $39.99. Email me if you're interested in more information or a trial to the live trading room at melissasockswish.com. I'll give you a trial if you want to come in and sit in the room to see what I do. I also teach a class called the Trends Course. This is $9.99. You can email me if you want more information on this. This is more for swing trading or longer term trades. This does not teach you how to day trade, but it does teach you how to read longer term trends. And if you want to do both of these, I'm offering half off if you sign up for both. The cost of this is $44.99 for two classes. So remember when I said fall trading is here, this is a very busy season. Just in the last two weeks, I've, I've had a very strong period and I didn't even hold all those things to the targets. For those of you that are here for the webinar, if you want to sign up for the November class by Halloween, I'm offering the swing trade letter free for a year. And another class I teach which is on trading psychology. It's called the Wealth Manifestation Course. And I'm offering that free. That's a savings of $13.99. Uh, so you have to email me if you're interested to sign up by Halloween. That's October 31st. The class itself is November 7th and 8th. So this is a nice special that I'm offering for people that want to sign up uh, within the end of the week. Now let's see if anyone has any other questions. If you are interested in a trial to the room, you have to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. I will send you a trial. You can watch me trade live to determine if this is for you. Different 21-point rating system for bullish gaps and bearish gaps. You could flip the points if you want, TJ, and do the bearish class and flip the points for bullish, but I will tell you that there are some things that are not the same. So if you really are going to do longs more, you take the bullish class. The cost of the class is the same. You can flip the points if you want in the opposite direction, but there are some things that are not exactly the same. The class, here I'll go back. Suresh is asking me, here's the information on the class. It's $39.99, it's two-day class. Retakes are free. So let's say you take the class in November, you come back in January, you want to retake it, you don't have to pay for it again, then it's free. Uh, John is asking me about Apple. If you guys want to stay here for one second, I'll bring Apple up. I have to bring up my charts. Does anyone else have any more questions? Here's my contact information. It's melissa at thestockswish.com. If you want to stay, I'll, I, I don't know if Dan is going to let me stay here. He's been wonderful. Uh, let me just quickly bring up my charts. Just hang on, everybody. Um, shoot, I was taping this too. Just hang on one second. see if I can actually figure this out. I think I can. 